Now let's look at a bit more detail of setting up the vertical scale. To make it simple, I'll just use a battery here, which gives a straight DC voltage. Now, as you can see, the oscilloscope displays the battery voltage as a single straight line. That's because the voltage does not change with time. Also, the vertical adjustment has actually two knobs associated. The one we showed earlier, and this other one was actually used to change the position of the signal anywhere on the screen. This is very useful if you want to compare two signals or you want to move one away from the other. So by measuring the vertical boxes here, we know the height of the voltage. But hang on a minute. If we can change this, how do we know where to start? Looking closer, you can see a small little arrow here. This is our zero position. So as I move around, we can say where it starts. And I can change the scale again, as we did before, with, with the vertical position button. So now, reading this number on the screen, it's 500 millivolts per individual box here. So now we have 1, 2, 3, which means it's 3 times 500 millivolts, which is it's 1 and a half volts, as our multimeter displays here on the screen. Now again, if I adjust the vertical adjust to a lower scale, we can see the number underneath changing. Now it's reading one volt per division, which means again this is one and a half volts, but that's not quite as accurate. So we can adjust the scale whatever you want. The important thing to remember is the signal itself is not changing because the battery per voltage remains fixed. We're simply changing the zooming in factor on of the scale. Now, as I said earlier, this is the way we look at our zero, but there is another simpler way of looking at our zero position by one of these side sub buttons that we talked about earlier. By pressing this button here, we can bring up the ground button, which is another zero reference button. This shows instantly where the zero is on the screen. And important to remember, this does not flatten the battery and make it zero, it just zeroes it on the screen so we have a reference where zero is. So now we, we know exactly where zero is and we can count back up from there. Also, note here, this button has another function. It has a thing called DC coupling, AC coupling on ground, as we said earlier. DC refers to a voltage that's a direct current, which does not change direction. AC refers to a voltage or a current that changes direction. DC coupling allows, interestingly enough, DC and AC through. Whereas AC coupling allows only AC or a variable voltage through. So when I press AC coupling, there's, the battery voltage is not varying, so we see nothing. This can be useful sometimes if you've got a very small signal sitting on top of that you want to see. You want to get rid of the big DC component of it and just see the small AC. Now we're going to look at setting the uh, vertical axis for an AC signal. AC comes on the word alternating current, where the current changes direction. Or in terms of voltage, where the voltage changes polarity from positive to negative. This is unlike a DC current, or a DC voltage where the current is going one direction and the voltage remains fixed. Now on channel 2 we can see the single straight line from a DC signal, which is we can measure from 0 up to the line itself. And we see the scale is 500 millivolts, so we can work out the value of it. Now if I switch in channel 1, we can see our AC signal. Now the first thing to note, it's in the wrong position. So we can use our position button here to set it where we want. The, the vertical axis comes from the of a, a scale adjust, channel select and a position button. So we'll just bring this down wherever we want to set it. Now it does not matter where we set it because the zero position always comes with it. So another important point at this stage to point out, we, have, we know we're looking at channel one here because it says it down here, but sometimes you can't see the channel. That's because its position has gone off screen. So this is where the position button, you need to check that at all times to find your signal. So we bring it, we bring it down here and we put it there. It's zero just to overlap where the other one is at the moment. Uh, I'll just turn off channel two to give it away. Um, now we can look, we have our zero position and we can make our measurements of, of this voltage. Now we can see the scale reading here is 20 volts per division. A division means one of these complete boxes. So looking at that, it looks like it's about 18 volts. But to get a more accurate reading, we'll set this voltage scale adjust with this knob here. 
Now, we, this is equivalent to zooming in on and now the scalar rating is 10 volts per division. Now we can read it as about 15 volts to the peak. Now if I switch on my Chong 2 again, briefly just to see it, there's our DC and our AC. Now we can read it as 10, 10 volts per division, which means it's about 15 volts from the zero line to the top here. Now the difference between this and our AC or DC straight away is that this goes negative below the, the zero volt line. So the voltage starts off here at a high value, reduces down, goes through zero, and becomes a negative. At this point, if we connect this voltage into a circuit and run the current through, the current will actually change direction at this point. Now we can measure the negative exactly the way we measure the positive half of the cycle, but counting from the zero line down. So it's 5, 10 plus 5 is 15 volts negative. So overall we have a 15 volts negative and a 15 volts positive. We can say this, this wave is at 30 volts peak to peak, and that's the expression we use to signify the magnitude of, of an AC signal as 30 volt peak to peak voltage. Now we saw that our oscilloscope measured the peak to peak value as being 30 volts, but our signal generator also tells us the peak to peak value is putting out. But looking at the display, it's telling us it's just putting out 3 volts peak to peak, not the 30 volts oscilloscope is telling us. The reason for the difference between the two readings is that we've not correctly set one of the side menu buttons on the oscilloscope. The probe multiplier button acts as a scale multiplier. It multiplies the vertical axis. In this case, it's 10 times. So we've got 10 volts per division here. I can set this value to whatever I want. So if I select it here, we can cycle through different multiplication values. If I put it back to one volt per division, we see on our vertical scale, it is now one volt per division. So if we count, we've roughly one and a half volts each side of the horizontal scale, giving us three volts peak to peak, our correct value. The function of the probe multiplier button is to match the oscilloscope with the type of cable we're using. For most cases, we're just using standard cable connected to our signal generator. But sometimes we use test probes. These test probes are used in cases where we're measuring, say, for example, a very high voltage of 100 volts or even 1,000 volts. In that case, the test probes have a built-in voltage divider, and the oscilloscope has to be able to compensate for that. But for most measurements where we're just using standard cable, it's essential that the probe button is set to one-to-one. -to -one. So before making any measurements, always check this setting is at one, otherwise you'll get an enormous error in your voltage reading. Our signal generator here is producing our AC signal. And if you look at our signal generator, we can see all these buttons to set different frequencies. Along with setting the frequencies, this generator has another facility which is called a DC offset here. This allows us to mix in a DC component along with the AC. And as you can see, it's set slightly, slightly above zero to add a small DC to our AC. So we should be able to see our DC component on our oscilloscope wave. But looking at our AC signal, they can't see any DC component in it. It's still symmetrical above the zero volt line. That is because we have not set the coupling button. The coupling button is set into AC, which only allows AC through. So if I switch it, it goes to ground. This is, as we said before, which is our ground position, which we can position it anywhere we want. It doesn't change anything. And the other setting is our DC, which only allows DC and AC through. Now we can see our AC plus the DC component on it here, above the zero volt line. Sometimes you will get signals like this that are a mixture of two. For example, an amplifier which is powered off a DC voltage. It might have a small DC component built into it. In this case, you want to get rid of that and just look at the AC. Or indeed, you may have an AC signal which is really small up on top of a very big DC and you cannot see it. Again, you need to get rid of the DC component and look at the AC only.